If you are doing this, you are making a huge mistake. It's a simple mistake that can cause a lot of frustration, especially to new joiners. The good news is that you can go from confusion to clarity with this simple technique. Stop organizing as a librarian, organize instead by action and utility. Let's take a look. The folder structure of many projects is built around technical concepts. For example, you can find projects like this where you have a common handlers folder, comments folder, repositories for having a set of interfaces to the repositories, validators, all those kind of things. By looking to this, I may have a clue that this was built with CQRS in mind. Maybe it's using Mediator, something like that. But all those things are technical concepts. Without the drill down into these folders, I don't know what this application is doing, right? So far, you don't know what this is solving at all. Once I expand, for example, comments, you will know that it's adding orders, it's adding products, it's canceling orders, and many other features. And this is one of the problems of building your folder structure around the idea of technical concepts. Because it becomes really difficult to understand what that application does, it becomes difficult to find anything, the cognitive load to performing any task like finding something, refactoring, dropping, all those things are complex because now when I need to do something related to the add order feature, I need to go to all folders to see if there's something there related to that feature. It's really painful to do those kind of things. A simple action like removing a feature from this application becomes expensive. It's not you that will mostly suffer with this problem because you will know how to navigate on that code base. The problem usually is on that person that joins your team and now the time to be up to speed with that code base is quite high because they don't know where things are. Another common problem with this approach is that it may lead you to do things like this. For example, by having a folder named repositories or services, something like that, I may have the tendency of building something like an I order repository, an interface to have all the things related to the orders inside that. So we are not doing a good job regarding segregation of responsibilities here. This folder structure is kind of the librarian approach, where you fit every single thing that is on the same category inside of the same folder. This may work for books, because when you go to the library to find a book, you will search on a given category and it should be there. If you are studying a given topic, all the books related are inside of the same section of the library. When we are implementing a feature, a feature will have multiple elements of code related. When we are writing a method, that method may be spawned into multiple classes. So features tend to evolve together. That's why I say that you need to organize your code by action and utility. What does that mean? That means that when you are building your folder structure, you should think about how this thing will be used on the future. Will it evolve together with other classes? So they should stay together. By doing this, we are reducing the friction and the cognitive load required to perform a refactoring. And when we are building code, we should always think about maintainability. That's one of the key reasons to organize that way. But how can we put that in practice? To do that, we basically use feature folders. So if we look into this project, we can refactor it into feature folders. And let's do it. By looking to this, I can see that I have, for example, an add order feature because I notice that I have an add order command, add order command handler, add order validator. So let's create a folder here named add order. Now let's move every single thing that is regarding add order into there. The command handler, the command, the validator. But now it comes to the tricky part because the repository may have multiple responsibilities. I don't have an interface only for adding order. So this is an opportunity of refactoring. Instead of having an interface that is covering a lot of things, I can segregate that responsibility. And I can go here and I create a new interface, I add order repository. I go to the I order repository, I remove this definition from here and I add to my new interface. So that's it. Now I have segregated that feature into the add order. Let me just do off camera to the other concepts. Then, so now when I look into this project, 
I have a clear picture of what this application is doing. It can add orders, it can add products, and it can cancel orders. If I want to decompose this application into multiple microservices, for example, it will be quite trivial because now I have everything together that should go into the new application. If I'm introducing a new feature like add category, and I know that it's kind of the same as adding a product, I can copy this folder, duplicate it, do some renames, small fixes, and it will be really fast to deliver that feature. And the best of all is that anyone coming to the team, a new joiner, will look into this thing and will understand what this application does. This is the idea of screaming architecture that is on the clean architecture book. You want new developers coming into that source code and just on the first impression, they know what this system should be about. One of the common problems that I've been seeing on the .NET world is regarding APIs. When we create a new API using the MVC model, what usually happens is that we come up with this folder structure, okay? We have controllers, we have models, we have views. That will put you on exactly that thing that I'm trying to afford. That will lead you to build applications where you stick together every single thing around the technical concept. So you open your controllers, and you know that here you have an orders controller and a products controller. You don't know what is inside that thing. So when you introduce new features around orders, for example, you need to play this order controller. Once again, the segregation of responsibilities will suffer on this case. So building applications with this MVC template may lead you to do a poor job around structuring your application on your API. The good news is that you have alternatives to that. Since .NET 6, you can use minimal APIs. With minimal APIs, you can structure your code as you wish. If you are still skeptical around minimal APIs, take a look into this open source project by Steve Smith, the API endpoints. It's pretty cool, I have used it in the past, and you can build your API endpoints in different files and different folders, and that is a good way to structure your application when I say that you should organize by action and utility and keep related things together, I don't say that you should avoid having multiple projects. And if you are interested on how to structure your solution besides projects and folders, make sure you watch this video. I will see you soon. And in the meanwhile, just keep things simple.